Welcome to Art Starts Explorers. I'm Kay, and I work at Art Starts as a gallery coordinator and preparator. I started the Art Starts program three years ago, and I'm excited to bring a version online that can be enjoyed by families across the province. This week, we're going to explore the alphabet. It's as easy as A, B, C. When we learn our letters, we're doing so much more than just learning to read. We're learning to recognize patterns, to draw and communicate abstract ideas, and to archive and record ideas and experiences. The alphabet we learn for English and French using the Latin alphabet is also only one kind of alphabet. This month, we're going to look at the word alphabet. Look at alphabets used by different people and languages across BC and around the world and even take apart our letters and put them back together in ways that go beyond reading and writing. At Arts Arts Explorers, we have three rules or guidelines we like to follow. First is respect. We practice respect for ourselves by listening to how we feel, respect for others by listening and sharing, respect for the land by acknowledging the nations and indigenous people who have served and continue to serve as guardians and stewards of the land, and by doing our best to be respectful guests as we learn and play here. Second is no expectations. Try not to plan too much before trying something today. If we get a picture in our heads of how something should turn out, we can be disappointed with ourselves when it doesn't. Try practicing surprise with yourself and always ask, I wonder what will happen if I... Third is that nothing is for keeps. In the gallery in Vancouver, we like to say, take nothing home with you except your experience. But since many of you are at home now, we challenge you to unmake everything you try today. This means, after you finish trying something, try to disassemble or take it apart so you can use it again for something else. Try not to make any completed thing, and whenever possible, pull from your recycling bin to practice. And if it can be recycled when you're done, put it back. Trying something new doesn't need to make something for keeps. And that's just what we're practicing today. In this video, I'm going to be exploring the alphabet we use in written English and French, which uses the Latin alphabet because these are the languages we use primarily at art starts and schools. However, you can try and explore today with any alphabet you know or are learning. You might speak one language at home that is different from the one you are learning or using at school or at work. You might be learning another language after moving to a new place or into a new home or family. You might speak one language and use another alphabet or language if you read in Braille or if you use sign language. For oral languages, like many of those spoken by different indigenous people of Turtle Island, you might be learning to use an alphabet to translate sounds that do not have any traditional written script so it can be recorded, read, or taught. And it's not always a perfect match. Sometimes the act of trying to organize or contain a spoken or gestural language into a neat and organized container, like an alphabet, isn't going to be perfect. It becomes an opportunity to really look at the differences and unique ways we have learned to communicate around the world. Whichever language or alphabet you choose to explore is going to yield exciting new ideas and knowledge. And if you have the privilege of learning and knowing different alphabets, I encourage you to explore each one and share your experiences with others around you. This theme is our most abstract so far. For framing, you could pick up an actual frame to look through. For erasers, you could carry it in your hand. Today, as we explore the alphabet, we're exploring something you can think about, read, write, sign, feel, combine, communicate with, and that acts as a container. Wow! Before we start our hands-on activity, I want us to do an imagination activity together. I want you to imagine a bag or a suitcase. Whatever picture you see in your head is great. If you can't see a picture in your brain, that's okay. Here's a picture of what I thought when I said the word bag. You can use it too. Try asking your family and friends what they saw when I said, or when you say, the word bag. Maybe you saw a picture. Maybe you saw the letters B A G. Maybe you saw a memory of a bag. Maybe you didn't see anything, but you knew what I meant when I said bag. 
It can be hard for us to describe exactly what we feel or see when someone says a word. It takes a lot of practice. If it helps, try drawing a picture of a bag. Or draw a square and tell that square it's a bag. You could even write bag beside the square. Now I want us to imagine putting a bunch of letters into that bag. What do the letters look like? How big are they? Do they have different colors? Can you touch them? Or are you imagining them getting into the bag themselves? Are your letters flat? Or do they have dimension or weight? If you're still doing this in your brain, can you describe what you see or feel to your family or friends? If you are drawing a bag and some letters, show the other people exploring with you what you drew or tell them about what you drew on your page. How is it different from what they saw or drew? One way of thinking about the alphabet is as a bag or container full of letters. It is a collection or inventory of letters. Some languages have alphabets that contain 26 letters like English and American Sign Language. Some have more like the Arabic Abjad, which includes 28 letters. And some have fewer letters like Hangul, which uses 24 basic letters for the Korean alphabet. Each of these letters can mean different things when we use or understand them. In Braille, the tactile alphabet, meaning you feel the letters to read them, the combination of raised dots within a cell is linked to a letter or punctuation. In the Spanish alphabet, there is an N with the tilde, the wavy line above it. This letter is a part of that alphabet, and their alphabet wouldn't be complete without it. So if we think of an alphabet as a bag full of letters, depending on the letters we put into it, or how we use them when we take them out, you can start to see that there are so many different ways we can use alphabets to explore art making and critical thinking. For today, let's fill our explorer's bag with letters from the Latin alphabet. I'm going to sing you two ways to get ready. Sing along together if you know the song. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my A, B, C's. Next time won't you sing with me? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. With our imaginary bags filled with letters, let's also get the following things ready. Some pieces of paper. I like to use recycled printer paper. It doesn't matter if there's printing on the back. A mark making tool. Some scissors. And finally, reach into your imaginary alphabet bag and pull out your favorite letter. Take a moment to ask yourself why it's your favorite letter. If you don't have an answer why, that's okay. Keep thinking about it while we work. If you're not sure which letter to choose, you could always pick the first letter of your name. Take one of the pieces of paper. Start writing your favorite letter. Don't think about it too much. Just start writing the letter over and over again. After you've done that a few times, Try writing the letter a different way than you've already done. Try a different mark making tool or a different color. Try using the other hand or writing backwards. Try it any way you can think of. There's no right or wrong way to write your letter. Next, take another piece of paper. Write your letter as big as you can. Try to take up the whole page. Try to make each section of your letter as thick and wide as possible so that it stands out on the page. If you start with pencil, try going over it with marker or crayon to make the letter more pronounced and visible. Then take another piece of paper and try writing a small version of the big letter you just drew. Really look at your big letter. Do you have flat or rounded edges? Did you make your letters serif or sans serif? Meaning, did you make ledges or strokes at the edge of your letters? 
Try drawing this version of your letter again and again, but change just one thing about it each time. How many different ways can you write the letter when you just change one thing each time? Really pay attention to each part of your letter. You have to look at what you just did to be able to make a little change with each new version. Now go back to your big letter. Look at all the shapes that make up your letter. How many shapes can you find in your letter? Mark them on top of your letter. Can you draw them separately on another page? Let's cut out sections of the letter now. Cut the letter into pieces. How many pieces did you cut? By cutting our image of a letter into these little pieces, we now have a new set of ready-mades or objects that we can use to explore. It was a letter, and now it's a bunch of shapes. What can you make with these shapes? Can you make another letter? Can you make the same letter again? There are so many ways to explore the alphabet. We only tried one or two things together in this video. We'll be trying even more ways of exploring in our live Facebook workshops on June 20th and June 27th. I hope you and your family can join us. Be sure to download our activity resource page this week for additional questions you can ask each other, as well as some words you can use to challenge yourself when you're describing your alphabet bag. And don't forget, when you're all done playing and exploring, Try to take things apart and put them away again so that the only things that are left behind are the pictures in your brain. Thank you for watching this video today. If you have any suggestions, please let us know. I hope to see you every Saturday at 11 a.m. on Facebook Live as we explore more together. All of our previous workshops and theme videos are also now available on our website. As you learn and explore new themes, it can be fun and interesting to go back and re-watch earlier episodes. What do you know now that you didn't know when you first watched it? What new questions can you ask? See you next time on Art Starts Explorers.